Hello everyone and welcome back to season 2, episode 4 of Heaven's Secret. And I'm very excited to see what happens because apparently mm, Angel Fencio and all of the upper seraph decided to declare war of... on hell when they decided to kill Vincesto and this is so gonna end badly I think that Bond wasn't in last episode so I'm really intrigued to know what happens it's time to find out the truth about at least one heaven's secret <clears throat> Chapter 4, Christmas. I sat on the edge of the bed and looked out the window. Mimi was doing a little dance as she was packing her things. It was Christmas Eve, the most celebrated holiday in heaven, and all the angels and demons were going home to spend time with their families. The unclaimed have nowhere to go. We're cast-offs. Mom is only a couple of hundred feet away from me, imprisoned in the tower, but I can see her, although she probably doesn't care for it. They decided to postpone the execution of the Edmarin until after the holidays. Oh, how generous of them. Mimi kept rambling about while she was packing. I heard Satan continues to negotiate with heaven. But angels are so stubborn. <laughs> um. They deserve each other. <laughs> Mimi turned to me in a fit and waved her hands. Make up your mind what side you're on, Simona. I'm not taking sides. It doesn't work that way. Mimi nervously crammed my clothes into the suitcase and had to sit on top of it to zip it. Every now and then the zipper would stubbornly refuse to close. What will you do during the holidays? Oh, damn it, stupid zipper. Stupid Sippa. Mimi jumped off her suitcase and punched it. Damn. I don't know. It's not like I have that many options. I see. Find some kind of entertainment. Don't wallow, okay? I'll try. Mimi held out her little finger. Promise. I grabbed onto it with my little finger to seal the deal. Pinky promise. I love their friendship. A couple of days have passed. I roamed around the empty hallway, sat alone under the Statue of Harmony, and even talked to myself. I was returning to my room when I noticed Dinah training in the backyard and Angel Fenzia watching his son. My poor baby. They stayed in school for the holidays? Yes, because apparently that's the only thing Dinah's allowed to do. Have you heard of the Great Sorcerer? Andy shrugged. Fancy you should know about him. He's fascinated with spells, so I think he knows those who created them. I might not have another chance to find out. I went to them. Dino wanted to take off, but changed his mind when he saw me approaching. What is the holdup? Fanzio turned around and almost flinched, noticing me. What now? Stop it. Period. Dino is so not having his father. He's in love with me. Beat it. They stared at each other like a bull and a torero before the fight. See? In the end, Fanzio gave in. Fine. You have five minutes, then you will continue training. Actually, actually, I came to talk to you, Angel Fanzio. <laughs> Now they're both gonna open their eyes like, girl, are you stupid? (laughs) Me? (laughs) We're trying to charm our old father-in-law. Yes, do you know anything about the great sorcerer? Fancy looked at me suspiciously, then slowly mumbled. Maybe I have heard something. Why? It's for the boy in the tower. (laughs) 
I love it that this is an option. I'm just gonna say it's for the boy in the tower. What? What? <laughs> I forgot that we didn't move away. Oh god, I can. I shouldn't have said that. Yes, you should have. I can't. The reaction scared me so much that I immediately fell silent, turned around, and almost ran back into the school. <laughs> Again. I'm looking for a way to connect with you. <laughs> I can't. These option choices. No, I came across it in a book. Come on. So I became curious. Curious enough to decide to ask me about it? You're a teacher? Fanzio fell silent. I either not knowing what to answer or questioning whether or not he should tell me anything. Finally, he said, the great sorcerer of us, Fidero. But no one knows where he is now and what happened to him. Can you recommend some books on him? He shook his head. I do not know any books of the kind. Oh, thanks. Well, can we continue the training? Ah, yes, I won't bother you any longer. <laughs> ah. I was about to leave, but Dino held my hand. What are you up to, Simona? Someone needs my help. Dino let go of my hand, and his gaze warmed up, although he was still a little worried. Dino liked the fact that you trusted him. Period. You're my baby, I have to tell you. Help who? A good person, and he'll help me. Are you sure? Dino, you can chat after you work out. My poor child always having to train, like... Fanzio said it sarcastically. He was obviously against us communicating, and I don't give a fuck, he's my baby. I'm gonna come to you either way. We'll get back to this, okay? Sure. Be careful. I will be, baby. And you'll be careful, too. I returned to my room, pondering over Fanzio's words. No one knows where he is. So much time has passed. What if he's dead? In the case, only see if I can free Bond. I sat on the floor in front of a large mirror and pulled out the small one, the one the angel gave me. It sparkled and Bond appeared in its reflection. I thought you forgot about me. He is so fucking hot. I am so done. I was trying to figure out how to break the spell. Really? Will you help me? He's so much of... I'll try, but I can't promise anything. I'm so grateful to you. He shows you... <laughs> Bond is so cute. Bond also sat on the floor, mirroring my position. He is so cute. He's literally like a little child. He's so glad to see me. A child with him? Bond, who are you? <laughs> You, are you always alone in the room? No. Some of the archangels and seraphim come to visit me sometimes. They teach me, help me to unlock my powers, ask me to meditate. Meditate? Yes, that's how they get into my subconsciousness. Bruh. Like, this is so fucked up. Like, this is so messy. Like, they train him, and then they ask him to meditate to be able to get into his subconsciousness to see what he's thinking about, if he has any evil intentions again. Bitch. Why would they do that? I don't know. And you just let them? I've got nothing to hide. Who are you? An angel. <laughs> you don't say. Or is that not what you meant? I don't know, there's something special about you. Well, there's something special about each of us. He's so cute. <laughs> hmm, you must have a past. On Earth, you probably got used to the idea that everyone should have a childhood parent, some kind of life story. In heaven, everything is much simpler, or more complicated. It depends on how you look at it. I was asleep for a long time. I have no past. But now I have a present. Why is Sifa keeping you locked up? He said it was dangerous for me to go out. My poor child. I'm weak, 
when someone can take advantage of that, sir, you are far from weak. My Bonte, for example. That smile disappeared from Bond's face. I think so. Why would Malwante need you? I don't know, but apparently for some reason he does. He is so hot. <laughs> mm, that's very funny how they're making the season. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just gonna say Bond, Malbonte. Hmm. Hmm. That that's funny. Back to business. I didn't find out much. In the library, I came across a book that said that the great sorcerer is responsible for all the old spells. The great sorcerer was Fidero, but there's no information about him. I'm afraid it's a dead end. Bond thought for a moment, then smiled dreamily. Aww. When I first woke up, I couldn't sleep. I was tormented by nightmares. Visions? I think so. I can't even say what I dreamed about. But these dreams scared me. Because of that, I stopped sleeping. Aww. And then one of the archangels began to tell me stories and legends. They helped me get rid of nightmares. One of the tales was about the great sorcerer who got tired of an endless life. He wanted to dispel his consciousness and become everything and nothing at the same time. The great sorcerer turned himself into the wind. They say one can hear his voice, but how? Bond laughed softly. Great stories. They might be true, don't you think? I don't know, but it would be wonderful. Some noise caught Bond's attention. What's going on there? Just a sec. Bond got up and disappeared from sight. A minute later, he returned. Those were the gods bringing food to the prisoners. Oh, how beautiful. <gasps> Do you know who's locked up there? No, and you? My mom and Admiral and Winchester. Your mom? But you're an unclaimed. <laughs> My mom died when I was little. Now she's a seraph. How strange. I didn't know the unclaimed could gain such power. I have so many questions for my mother. I'd like to talk to her. Help me meet her. A favor for a favor. You don't have to help me to ask for my help. Oh, he's so cute. He's like, even though you don't want to help me get out of the tower, it's okay, but I'm still gonna help you. He is so pure. Oh, your request is doable. Oh, can you take me past the guard? No way. I'll make the mirror become a portal directly into your mother's cell. I know where she is. I was eavesdropping. <laughs> he smiled guiltily as if he committed a crime. You are such a cutie. He he is so powerful and he's such a cutie. Bon folded his arms and closed his eyes and the reflection in the mirror started to get darker. It then spun, resembling a whirlpool. I timidly held out my hand and it went through the mirror. Here we go. It felt damp and incredibly cold. My eyes quickly got used to the darkness and I noticed two silhouettes cautiously recoiling from me. One of the silhouettes took a step forward. Simona? I felt numb and frozen place. For the first time in so many years, we were so close and so far apart. Well, hello, mom. What are you... what are you doing here? She grabbed my elbow and shook me. Do you realize how much trouble you'll be in if the gods find out that you are here? A second silhouette came out of the darkness. She's a brave girl, Rebecca. She takes after you, period. Why did you come here? Aren't you glad to see me? You should always think with your head, not your heart. And now you're doing stupid things, undermining your reputation. Don't flatter yourself. I came to get answers. What answers? Do you think there's enough time for me to answer everything? I know that you rejected Fencio when he sacrificed everything for you. And I know that you found something in the old book and tore out the pages, uh, the page so that no one else knew about it. I already know a lot, and I'll get to the bottom of things with or without your help. <gasps> so, what did you find in that book, Mom? What is she talking about, Rebecca? A book. Period. Mom turned pale and for the first time looked at me as a worthy opponent as a person. I'll tell you about the book later. I can't now. This is what you wanted to know about. A damn book. Not only that. I'll ask away and leave before you get caught. What do you want to know? Or should I start? There isn't much time. Hmm. Do you know who killed me? 
How would I know? How would you know? Maybe you did it. Are you blaming your own mother? My mom died when I was five. I don't know the woman in front of me. Period. I heard a lot of things about you. Why would I kill you? Then a mortal killed me. He took the form of a or d- deceased neighbor and killed me. Are you sure? Yes. I didn't know that. Oh God, that means. Oh God. What does it mean? Nothing so far. It's only a hunch. Right. Tell me. I don't take orders from you. I'll tell you when and if the time comes. How did you manage to move up the ladder so high? You can hate me. Consider me a bitch. A ruthless creature. And believe me, you'll be right, baby. Oh! But I came this way when I realized that the unclaimed are considered unworthy. I decided to prove them all wrong. To show these arrogant and moral children that people are no worse than they are. And I walked all over people, but everyone else did it too. They forget about what they did back then. But when it comes to an unclaimed, those narrow-minded pricks shout from the top of the lungs about things being unfair. Mom came closer to me and started whispering quickly so that the admiral wouldn't hear. But there is more to it, believe me. It turns out I had help. But no one should know about this. No one. Mom. Sure. Subject closed. What do you know about my bounty? Mom wanted to answer, but voices were heard in the hallway. You need to leave. Now. But there's no time. They shouldn't see you. Mom turned me around towards the portal. They won't dare to kill me. Don't worry. And she pushed me from behind. As soon as I stepped out of the mirror, Bond's reflection appeared in it. How did it go? There was too little time. I went to the closet and nervously started to take out clothes. Are you going somewhere? I need to take a walk. It's stuffy in here. <laughs> Did anything go wrong? He is such a hot guy. Ooh. I don't want to talk about it. I wanted to change, but Bond continued to watch me with a smile. Oh, <laughs> I can't, sorry. Like a child who doesn't realize that he needs to turn around. Hmm. No, no, this is a romantic choice. I want to take it so badly because I love this man. He's my favorite, but I can't ask him to turn around. Could you? I spun my finger in the air. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Bond turned around so I could change clothes. (laughs) Ooh, yes. Yes, girl. I love this outfit so damn much. I closed the closet door and spin in front of Bond. Do you like it? Isn't it too pretentious? We're literally asking him. (laughs) I can't. Oh no, you look lovely. Aw, does everyone dress as beautifully as you? Sir, just tell me already that you're in love. There's no dress code, but many angels and demons try to emphasize their affiliation. And the unclaimed are afraid to dress too brightly. But not you. Earthly habits are hard to break. Period. I'm used to dressing the way I like. And if it's not against the rule, why not? Where are you going? I need to vent. The conversation with my mom was so strange. It was as if we just saw each other a few hours ago. As if our meeting was something ordinary, tribal. Like she never died. She became so... Oh, forget it. Let's talk later, alright? Oh, of course. Simona? Yeah? Everything will be fine. He is a beautiful being. (laughs) He's so beautiful. He is so pure-hearted. He is so kind. He's great. Bond's reflection in the mirror disappeared. I was walking around the yard when I heard a flap of wings coming from above. And he landed right in front of me. Oh, you scared me. Sorry. What were you doing? I was training. Training to jump? Yes, Gerald said that I'm becoming good at extreme jumps. It's a useful skill. What for? Annie and I started to walk around like mortals strolling in the park on a Sunday afternoon. There is a department of angels and demons who are sent to scout dangerous areas to check or find something. Would you like to do that? Of course. It's a wonderful feeling. To feel the void beneath you, to hear the wind whistling in your ears as if talking to you, to see the ground rapidly approaching. Wait, what did you say? Is the wind talking to you? Well, not really. Where are you jumping from? Why? Do you want to jump? Can you take me there? All right. Yes. I looked down and immediately took a few steps back. My head was spinning. 
Oh, is everything okay? Dozens of crazy thoughts flash through my head. They merge into a single picture, or more, pre- or more precisely, into a single crazy plan. I need to jump. What? What for? Instead of answering, I accelerated and jumped. I did it quickly, afraid to change my mind. The gush of cold air hid my face and threw my hair back. My heart sank rapidly, and a scream got stuck in my throat. I wanted to open my wings, but I held them back and pressed them into my back. Despite the fear, the wind whistling in our ears. This is how he talks to us. Maybe I'll manage to summon Fidero? And all of a sudden I heard something hazily, or maybe I imagined it. Gorro, terro, duo. <gasps> Who is it? But the wind didn't talk back. Then I repeated after it. Gorro, terro, duo. As I s- As soon as I said this, a couple of enormous wings wrapped around me just like a cocon, and I froze in midair. Damn. That dress, though? Where did that dress come from? (laughs) Ooh, you're a visitor of the Fidero wind. He stretched his arms and smiled. I felt a gush of wind in my face. I did it. Why did you call me? You used to be the great saucer. Fidero pursed his lips. The wind became colder. That is all in the past. You've cast a spell on the tower, and now one good person can get out of there. How can I free him? Hmm. I cannot reveal the secrets of such spells. Please. I can only say that everything has a beginning and an end, but endless is the path that leads nowhere. Fidero spread his wings and began to disperse and merge with the wind. What? What does this mean? And his voice, resonating from everywhere, answered. Did you know that if you drench a feather in the sacred river, it will glow in the dark? He disappeared and I continued to fall again. So, I would say he means we have to drench or feathers in the lake so that they will glow and we have to go to bond when it's evening. Like he said, that's the only way he will see. The tower is under some sort of delirium spell it's not like he's actually trapped but you can't exit the tower and you can't enter it either like you are literally stuck in that tower when he tries to run down the stairs it's like he's stuck in a loop he can't get out and at the same time he can't enter it either a flap of the wings the rustle of the feathers It took a little effort to level with the peak of the mountain, and then I carefully landed next to Andy. What was that? I solved one riddle and got the new one. Period. (laughs) Approaching school, I noticed Fire, who was desperately trying to escape from Dino. (laughs) Why? What is my baby Dino doing to you? What happened? I landed next to them. Hi. Hi. Dino tried to smile and at the same time hold down the huge dragon. What's wrong, Fire? Why are you holding him? He ate poison ivy. I need to give him an antidote. (laughs) Ah, What? Why would he do that? He wants to die. I don't know. He should have known it's ineatable. (laughs) Ah, Dino looked around. I need to get him out of here. Come on, buddy. Fire wanted to fly away, damn, but Dino's stern look made him fall out immediately. <laughs> I can't, this is, a, this is insane, this is so funny. I'll hold him, and you shove this into his mouth, damn. Eat it, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Dino opened Fire's mouth. He twitched and growled, but then he suddenly sighed and stopped kicking. Oh, my child, he's getting sick. Do it already. I tried to push the antidote as deep as possible so that fire wouldn't spit it out, but I had no reason to worry. The dragon immediately swallowed the pills. Crowley's tired of fire's attitude and wants to kick him out of school. Oh, Dino's worried. It's it's okay. But why? 
Fire seems to be looking for trouble. Now he's acting out because he's cursed. He just wants to be free. I was afraid that the seraph would see this, so I brought him here. Oh. I need to stay with Fire for a while until he finally comes to his senses. Would you like to keep me company? How could I leave you alone? Especially since I didn't look after him hard enough. Fire sniffled and barely paid attention to us. We went to the gazebo. Gazebo. Why do you think he did this? I don't know. Apparently something is disturbing him. This dragon seems to be the most miserable of all its kindred. That sounds very sad. Dinah watched Fire sleeping and seemed as sad as he was. Aww. Do you know what else is sad? Before everyone left, I ran into Lucifer. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. And I was so enraged that the two of you were close that I pressed him into a wall and began to choke him. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And do you know what Lucifer did? He started to laugh. Oh yo yo. I knew I started something. <laughs> I started something. I knew I started something. Uh, I have no one else to blame. <laughs> I punched him several times, and he fell, spitting blood, but continued to laugh. Do you know why? Why? Because he understood that my feelings for you make me uncontrollable, aggressive. Being an angel is difficult because it's a responsibility and a promise to oneself and others to bring kindness and light into this world. But I can't when I know that you and Lucifer. Dino took my hands. You don't have to, but I'm asking you to make a choice. It will be fair to us all. That's true. Like, <laughs> I tried so hard, but I'm messy. What can I do? Um, it's not fair to play with one's emotions because you wouldn't want someone to play with yours. So you can't um, play with someone's feelings if you know that you don't really have feelings for them like that. So I tried everything I could to keep the choices with Lucifer on a friendly base, even though it was already too late. Like, come on now. <laughs> You have feelings for someone. You can't play with the other one's emotions. Like, you just can't. So, what Dino's asking of us is only fair. He's like, I know I don't really have a right, but I can't do anything else about it. You have to tell me, is it me or is it him? Because he can't live with that uncertainty. He has to have reassurance. Otherwise, I'll make this choice. Sometimes to survive, one must chop off his own hand before the disease kills the whole body. Period. And I'll chop off my hand, no matter how painful it's gonna be. Oh, Dino. I don't think things will work between us. <laughs> I want to be with you. Dino squeezed my hands harder. Do you understand the consequences? I do. And I'm ready to take risks. Now you and Dino are together, yes. <laughs> Let me stop. The angel touched my cheek and smiled. All right. His hands stroked my face. His gaze was warm. Come to me. I am. Where else would I go? I sat on his lap and wrapped my arms around his neck. He took me by the hip, by the hips, sighed heavily, and squeezed his fingers. I tried to run away from you, decided to bottle up my feelings, get rid of them altogether. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't push you away as long as you were looking at me the way you're doing now. What are you doing to me, Simona? Are you a witch? Yes. Maybe. He slowly reached for my lips, gazing into my eyes. I kissed him back just as slowly. And slowly the kiss became more passionate. Dino pulled me closer to him. Moan. My moans aroused Dino even more. I've awoken a desire so strong that he couldn't suppress it. He couldn't say no. A desire that makes someone shut down the voice of reason and get carried with their feelings. So in love with that picture. Dino unfastened all the buttons on my clothes. He was calm and confident. There was no doubt in his actions, no hidden regret or fear of retribution. I saw that he wanted this, and I wanted to give it to him. 
Then I ran his palms over my shoulders, pulling off my clothes. Then he got down on one knee. His head was at the level of my panties. He looked up at me. Can I? Then I grabbed the edge of my panties. Yeah. He took them off halfway, hesitated a little, and then completely, and then removed them completely. He gently spread my legs. I felt his hot breath on my most intimate parts. I flinched when I felt the touch of his warm lips. Dinah. The skillful movements of his tongue made me moan hard and shudder from pleasure. I grabbed his hair to keep my balance. I could feel the cold column behind me. Dinah got up and my nipples pressed against his shirt. Raise your leg. I obediently fulfilled his request. He grabbed it from under the knee and pulled it gently aside. One movement of his body and I was groaning and moaning again. At first... He pushed in slowly, but soon his thrusts gained mon momentum. I could, I could feel his lips everywhere, on my face, on my neck, on every protruding bone. Dino whispered into my ear, You're the sweetest forbidden fruit I've ever tried. And how many forbidden fruits have there been? You don't have to try them all to know which one is the best. <laughs> That was a good one. That was a good one. He lifted my second leg and rested it on his lips. I screamed from pleasure and my voice echoed against the stone walls. Dino moved my body up and down as if I was as, as slight as a feather. His wings opened slightly with every throb. I felt a wave of heat building inside me and I snuggled closer, at times digging my nails into Dino's back through his shirt or holding onto the pillar behind me. Dino slowed down a little. Take your time. Why? I don't want to take my time. <laughs> he ran a finger over my face to my neck, then onto my breast. He touched them one by one and went further down to my stomach. I could feel my abs tighten under his finger. Then Dino moved his finger even lower. I arced and spread my wings to prevent from falling. Do you want to do it in the air? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What is this? Dinah pressed me closer to him and abruptly took off. He covered me with his wings and I wrapped my legs around him. Quick, deep strokes were driving me crazy and I was moaning in a hoarse voice. Dino, he hugged me. It took me a while to regain my ability to speak. Dino carefully descended and spread his wings, allowing me to pull away. It felt cold without his arms around me. We exchanged glances and smiled. Are you cold? Dino handed me my clothes and kissed me on the forehead. Thank you. Being with him is worth the risk I'm taking. We're talk we're taking. Your relationship with Dino improved. We're already together. Like what's there to improve? <laughs> Let me stop. The dragon woke up after a while. The antidote worked. Fortunately, Fire's stunt didn't leave a trace. Let's go. The angels and the demons returned to dorms. The school threw a banquet to celebrate Christmas and honor their return. Usually, Christmas was a big deal around here. There were spectacular balls, and the whole school was decorated. At least that's what I've been told. But this year, everything looked modest. A simple dinner aimed at reconciling everyone. But things have gotten much worse. The students returned even more hostile and aggressive. It was a rare sight to see an angel and a demon talking with each other. Path of the angel. We're an angel. I sat with the angels. Among them, I felt at ease. You're weird. Huh? Hearing a man's voice, I turned around. Why? You mostly talk to demons and then you sit among the angels. Are you a decoy? Damn. Sir. If it wasn't for his kind smile, I think he was looking to pick up a fight. But apparently my face showed some concern because Aster felt compelled to add, I'm joking, everyone is so tense these days. Yeah, this is so stupid. Who needs all these fights? Demons behave like children. After so many centuries, they suddenly realized that heaven rules the world and decided to take offense. Angels are always in charge. If they don't admit it, they'll be worse off. I looked at him apprehensively. If all angels share this idea, and the demons continue to harbor anger, what will it lead to? War. We are looking for war. And 
actually, I'm on the demon side. Like, I really, really am. If uh, heaven and hell decided to put all their powers together, angels coming to the school, demons coming to the school, and then working together to keep balance on earth, heaven can't be above hell. That's, that's not fair. That's not okay. If everyone wanted to have heaven rule everything, then they shouldn't even have thought about bringing demons to the school. Like, of course, they will feel belittled. Like, (laughs) it's just a normal thing. I was scared to even think about it. Seraph Crowley got up from the table and went to the other end of the room. His His voice thundered. It's good to see you all again. Even during such a volatile time, we decided to pay tribute to our history and celebrate it. I hate you, sir. I really do. You know that this bitch is actually encouraging the fight between angels and demons? Like he's actually putting gas into fire. After all, Christmas marks the birth of the earth and humankind and their world. Mortals attribute a slightly different interpretation to it, no less important. After all, everything has a starting point. By tradition, everyone will come out front and thank Sifa for something. I will be the first to go to break the ice. I want to thank Sifa for the peace that we have found and for the prosperity it brought into this world. (laughs) I'm intrigued to know what the demons will have to say about that. Seraph Crowley sat back at the table and turned towards the students, expecting someone to stand up. Path of the angel! (laughs) The chair creaked. Asta got up. Lilo stood up. Asta got up. (laughs) I just know he's gonna say something unpredictable and I'm here for it. He strolled past the students and confidently stood in front of them. Oh my god, I want to say thank you for being who I am. The demons tensed noticeably, but Asta never crossed the line. I want to say thank you for the wonderful mortals that you sent to us. He pointed in my direction, then at Monica. Aww. Hmm? Monica flipped him. He blew her a kiss. <laughs> thank you for giving me the opportunity. All I had to do was wish for it. Aw, that's cute. He bowed and returned to his seat. That was interesting. Who will be next? Lucifer. <laughs> Actually, I was kidding. <laughs> I can't. The chair creaked again. Lucifer got up from the table. Like, you know why I said Lucifer? Because Lucifer is the kind of person to always... He always has to have the last word. Like, if he doesn't, he's not satisfied. So, like, he heard someone say something he probably considers what Asta said as bullshit. And he's like, okay, and and I just have to say something about that. I just have to say my opinion right quick, right now, here real quick. So that you all know that that everything you're doing is bullshit and I'm not having it. (laughs) Everyone started to whisper. Lucifer never thanked Sifa before. He's probably not even gonna thank him. He's just gonna say some bullshit like, thank you for, um, I don't know. Uh, thank you for preferring angels <laughs> instead of demons. <laughs> What's he up to? <laughs> oh, I'm gonna live. But here he comes. As if it's not a big deal, he stands in front of everyone and starts to give thanks. I think Steve. Oh my god, Lucifer. <laughs> he fell silent. Um, Lucifer, you need to thank Siva for something. You need a reason. Lucifer turned to the headmaster and looked at him with undisguised mockery, period. I know. I thank Siva for loving some kids less than others. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Like, like it's just a fact. It's just a fact. He's like, thank you for preferring angels instead of demons. <laughs> huh? I'm living for giving some more power than others. Lucifer, for what do you think you're doing? Amid demons, cheers, and whistles and angels' rage, Sarah's voice was barely audible. <laughs> Thanks, Sifa, for not interfering in the lives of your children, even when they need your help. <laughs> even when they can't cope and do stupid things. <laughs> Lucifer, get out.
Lucifer continued to grin, period. Like, <laughs> I'm living, Lucifer. Lucifer. He bowed to the seraph <laughs> and slowly left the banquet hall. <laughs> The demons followed his lead and also left Perry. And like that was just that was amazing. That was insane. The banquet hall became half empty. Seraph Crowley froze, obviously confused. The demons have just boycotted the most important holiday in heaven. <laughs> Honestly, like I don't fucking give a damn. <laughs> that was insane. I'm in love with Lucifer. He's insane. I love him so much. Oh, I can't. That was that was incredible. That was so funny. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, well, I knew that war was gonna come, like, I said that so many times already, and for a good reason, like, honestly, heaven actually is belittling hell, and the demons literally don't have as much rights as angels, apparently, up in heaven, in that school, and, of course, they feel, they don't feel welcome there, like, of course they're welcome, but not for the reason that they want it to be like they don't really have as much rights as angels and it seems like the school is using demons for their power because they know that they have power and they're using them to keep like the balance but in favor of sifa and with rights so but they are literally belittling the capabilities of Satan and of the demons in general. They only praise the angels' powers, and that's fucked up. Like, that's not a right thing to do. And I'm so interested to see what will happen in the next episode. Like, I almost... <laughs> I'm almost up with... Uh, my, my demon's point almost have reached my angel points because i literally am with the demons on that side <laughs> and oh my god i'm so scared <laughs> what will happen in the next episode i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you bye